The Turlock Journal presents high school football from the field to your screen. The Blitz, sponsored by Moxie Credit Union. Welcome to The Blitz, the Monday edition. I'm Frankie Tovar. And I'm Eddie Ruiz. And we have coverage from Pittman at View Hat Colony, but you should know that because you should have watched our Saturday night highlights. And if you didn't, go back and watch it real quick. Click the card. We're not going anywhere, man. No. We'll be right here waiting for you. If you did watch it, then you know View Hat beat Pittman 27 to 14. Handing the Pride their first loss in CCC play. It was. And then the Buhat Colony Thunder, they had so many skilled players. I kind of want to go down that list, man. A lot of weapons, weapons, man. Man. A lot yeah, of weapons. You, you take a look at Kirarte, obviously Owen Thomas, and then you take a look at that guy going to Colorado, LaVon Wallace, a beast. And then the quarterback, man, Clay Abrams. Yeah, Aaron Sevilla some did well. some pretty good work, too. Aaron Sev See, like I said, man, a lot of weapons. Down the list. And so it made it really difficult for Pittman to kind of respond, That's especially true. with a lot of juniors and a lot of injuries as well. Injuries. They, yeah, the they main injury, though, is one injury. Yeah, they didn't have Dan Padilla, man, their star middle linebacker, linebacker. who was expected to be one of the best, and he was one of the best in the CCC until he got hurt. Yeah. Towards and, you know, Buhack, they took advantage of that. Yeah. A lot of runs up the middle, softening up the middle of that defense, and then they hit the outside, and then they'd hit it through the air. Yeah. And that is why Clay Abrams, the quarterback, a transplant from Turlock, yeah. he was a player of the game for Buhack with no question. He was 9-16, 134 passing yards, and four Touchdowns, three through the air and one on the ground. Man, that for is fantasy? quite a performance. Can you be my fantasy quarterback? Maybe in a few years, we'll see how things go. But train fair, I mean, if you're talking about, you know, some stats, maybe. He oh, matched him. Side. Yeah, I'll say, side. he matched him very well, man. He was six of 12, 124 yards, two touchdowns, but then three picks. That's what separated costly, them. man. Three costly oh. picks, yes. And then, you know, something else to kind of look at is the fact that the Thunder beat the Pride for the first time since 2013. It's another big accomplishment. That's something for them to kind of, you know, rally behind. And then the Pride, you know, you take a look at the, the, the way that things are looking. They're projecting to quite possibly maybe finish just above 500. But if not, this might be the first year where they don't have a winning season in program history. So that's something to keep in mind with the three games remaining. That's a good point. And the next three games that the Pride have is El Capitan, yeah. Golden Valley, and then of course Turlock. Now, oh. if I had to guess, if I had to look into my crystal ball and guess which game might give them trouble, I would say Turlock. So again, Harvest Bowl might be the deciding factor for the CCC title. So it's going to be exciting as always. Now, we're going to talk more about Pivot versus View Hack in just a minute with our 15 second rundown segment. But first, let's recognize our sponsor, Moxie Credit Union. Moxie Credit Union is their fourth year supporting the Blitz, and they're here to support you with all your loan needs. Do you need a home loan? Do you need a car loan? Do you need a general loan? Well, hey, you need Moxie. Check them out on Gear Road and tell them the Blitz sent you. All right, now it's time for the 15 second rundown and Eddie, you'll be up first. And here's your question. What factors led to Pittman's first league loss? It was mistakes. Penalties, encroachment, personal fouls, and then block in the back that was called back for a touchdown as well, that one play, and then obviously turnovers as well, man. And then special teams, onside recovery right there to kick things off, and then the blocked field goal. You're out of time. Now, Frank, it's your turn, man. How did BC orchestrate this win? Buack knew what was at stake, and they game planned accordingly. You mentioned the onside kick, but also you gotta mention the passing game. They took a page right out of Sun Tzu's Art of War book. They dictated the battleground, and man, Pittman had a hard time catching Catching up, they had a play from behind and they couldn't do it. Eddie, it's your turn again. What does Pittman need to do to win out? Trayton Fair, the quarterback, needs to be more consistent and obviously limit his mistakes, and the team obviously limit their mistakes, and then the injuries. That has been costly for them, obviously, so far, but they just need to find a way to put everything together. That way, they'll be able to win, hands down. All right, Frankie, last question, man. What should we expect from the remainder of the CCC season? We should expect hard hits and a few close games. Now, important to note, two of the teams in the three-way race have to face Merced. Turlock and Buhack. If I had to choose a team, I would choose Merced to be a spoiler, but also the Harvest Bowl. Looking forward to that game. I cannot wait. And that's your 15-second rundown. That about does it for our coverage of the Pittman versus Buhack Colony game. But before we talk about next week's episode we'll be covering, let's give some players some love because there are some players who deserve it. Now, Dan Padilla was out with an injury. Uh, that was a big blow to Pittman's defense. But some defensive players stepped up and played really well. Specifically, Lance Bickle and Tritton Brock. Man, those are some big guys that could take us down. But you got to give some love to some other guys as well. Obviously, you know, you take a look at Tyler Stout, yes. Jacob Partita, 
Keone Souza, Antonio AJ Reyes, great players. and then obviously Peyton Bass as well. He did oh, great. Of course, Peyton Bass. Yeah, and then some love to the linemen, man. How about that state wrestler, Brendan Talent? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and speaking of love for linemen, let's recognize Buhat Colony because they did really well with their running game specifically. Yeah. And I got to shout out the left guard, Noah Perez. He did really well, yeah. especially getting into the interior of the defense and blocking the linebackers. Yeah, and in that line, I, I don't know, you know, exactly, you know, we don't cover them obviously as all much. The names, right? Yeah, so we don't know all the names, but dude, that is a great line, and they have a lot of juniors, oh, yeah. which means they're going to come back next year. They're ready. Something to look forward to, man. I'm just saying. Yeah. Now, another thing to look forward to is next week's coverage because it's a rival game. Oh, and not just any rival game. Which one? Which it's Delhi versus Denaire. Ooh. SAL Showdown. We'll see how that all shakes out on Friday. And that's going to be at Delhi, right? It is. And these small schools always come out ready to play. Oh, yeah. Play hard, that's for sure. And I know they're excited to have us there. And we're excited to cover it. So you can check out that episode at TurlockJournal.com. You can find our updates at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, Subscribe to our YouTube channel for regular content. Hey, and don't just subscribe. Click on the notification bell so you can get all the content when we post it. So until then, I'm Frankie Tovar. I'm Eddie Ruiz. Good night.